I literally just got blown away. You want to see why? Stay tuned. Guys, I am so excited to bring a very special guest. Her name is Clara from Clara Lawrence Art. She is amazing. I wanted to create a finish that had a watercolor vibe to match a painting that a customer wanted as an inspiration for her countertop. And that's not my wheelhouse, so I brought in the best of the best. So Clara, take it away. Thank you, Rhonda. Take it away. We wanted to create something really unique and try something new with the alumilite dyes. Uh, alcohol inks, not really good idea with um, resin projects, but aluminite dyes might have some potential. I know. So we're going to explore that. Okay, so we're getting ready to start the vanity. Mm -hmm. And so what I gave Claire as a inspiration was the customer chose this color palette. And it's just very, very soft blues and blue grays. And so Clara... And it was based off of a photo. A photo. Or a painting that they had, right? Right, exactly. Yeah. So these are the colors that she worked on getting mm -hmm. that was approved. And she's going to now tell you how she came up with that color mm -hmm. palette and how she made the colors. That's true. Now, I mess around a lot with alcohol inks. Now, the kicker, the situation with alcohol inks is they're very sensitive. They don't like UV light. They're not light fast. Anything that goes into sunroom, kitchen, bathroom, it's going to have sunlight. So that's a big problem. So we ended up working with the Illumilite dyes. They're already designed to go with resin. And I've been playing with kind of a ratio, but it's, it's very simple. Um, these little bottles here, you can get them from Hobby Lobby. We fill them up mostly, you can see, full with alcohol. And it's 91% alcohol that I use. Um, I've never done alcohol inks with 99%. But, I was, I was going to ask you But I know that, that that's, one. you know, tougher yeah. to get a hold of. And it's also a lot stronger in smell. And what we also did is the Illumilite dyes, we're only adding a couple of drops into the bottle. It doesn't take a whole lot to get it to a really dark color. So be sparing with it. If you overdo your drips, then you'll end up with a product that doesn't seem to ever dry. Right, because it's very, very thick mm -hmm. and it, you can't manipulate it. Right. And let me also say one reason that one of the requests that the customer had was she wanted a watercolor type of finish. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I uh, grabbed Clara, because she's the queen of this, and I said, hey, this I is try. what I need. So that's why we're going with these and not just putting dyes in, mm -hmm. in epoxy. Now we are doing a little bit of an exception. The exception is the gold that we're using where it is an actual alcohol ink, but it's brass. And so it's got little tiny particles of metallic in it. So that's so it's, not gonna fade. No, it's right. not an ink or anything like that. So those will float up on the surface just like 007 and the Just Resin Bright Gold will. Right. And it'll add a little bit of the shimmers here and there. All right, so these colors that we're talking about, these colorants, mm -hmm. they're going to be available uh, eventually they will be available on my website, but until then, check out artisttilldeath.com. We'll put a link in the description and use uh, code RK3 when you check out and you'll get a discount. So, yep. also, all of the products that we use will be linked in the description. All right. Excellent. Uh, the other one is also a resin product, and these are the resin art colors. And they're what they call a dry pigment paste, but it looks like real gra um, chunky granules, almost like coffee like, grinds. It, yeah, it looks like instant which I know, coffee. Sorry. Yeah. Do you have those <laughs> bottles of that over here? I do. I okay. do. Uh, we well, can bring that in and show it a little bit later yep, if you want. I'll do that. Mm -hmm. uh, but they dissolve instantly in alcohol as well as resin. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, I believe, a sol solvent based right. product. Okay. So these particles in here, when they're submerged in the alcohol, they act a lot like the mica uh, powders within alcohol. Right. So they settle super fast. You always give it a quickie shake mm -hmm. just before applying it. Got it. But it adds such a pretty shimmer. Yeah, it does. It, I, I'm so excited. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. And I, like I said, my disclaimer is this is not my wheelhouse. 
So that's why I'm super excited that, that you came in and agreed to do this. So, I get to play. Yes. Okay, <laughs> so what do I need? What do we do? need? Alcohol. We need alcohol. I always have a bottle of this and I have a little, couple little bottles, mainly so that you can apply it exactly where you want it. A little bit kind of precision, if you want to call it anything. So this is just pure 91% alcohol. 91% alcohol. Okay, gotcha. so I can probably stick that right in the middle there. Okay. Um, and I usually apply a lot of alcohol as a base. Just, just like watercolor, you want your colors to start mm -hmm. flowing. Oh, let's talk about how we prepped this also. Oh. So we uh, painted it the substrate with our um, undercoating, the stone coat countertop undercoating. You can also use any kind of white paint. Then after it dried for 24 hours, then we poured a uh, clear coat of the art coat epoxy from stone coat countertop. We poured it at a ratio of two ounces per square foot. All we wanted to do is get a clear epoxy surface because these uh, alcohol dyes that we're making have to have a very slick uh, base to be able to manipulate them. If we went straight over the paint, all that would happen is it would get it just, absorbed. It yeah, like it just sucks in like it. a sponge. Yeah, it yeah. stains it. So by applying your clear coat first and letting it dry overnight, mm -hmm. we kind of get an ice skating rink. Yep. <laughs> That's basically, basically what we have. <laughs> All right, so I got one of the bottles of resin art. Did I get one? Yes, I got one that was empty. Oh. That doesn't help. <laughs> this is the color that acts a lot like the mica powders does. This is resin art. They all have a slight shimmer to them, but if you notice, it's got really almost chunky like, granules. Kind of a chunky granule. And, mm -hmm. and like I said, it's almost like a um, really pretty shimmers. just just a beautiful powder and literally when you put um, that into alcohol or even resin instantly it will dissolve and beautiful mm -hmm. beautiful okay and you can also apply that to your top part when you're doing any kind of manipulation yep yep you know exactly like you would normally do it yep like now powders. I got a blue smurf finger <laughs> <laughs> all righty okay let's get to it all right, so we talked about kind of doing a nice little swipey swipe kind of diagonalish line yeah, kind here. Kind of a little swoosh. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's get to it. There's just no other way to do it. And yeah, you'll go through a bit of alcohol. All right. So you just kind of take your hand and and I'm just moving it around a bit just to get it covered to a point. All right. Since this is a large surface. By the time you get the entire surface done, it's gonna be dry. Uh, evaporation, yeah. yeah. So I always give them a quickie shake, start laying down some colors just to start building up some colors. Kenny's already making I know, he's faces making these in the back because he loves it already. Yawny face. No, he was like cheering. <laughs> This is a warm gray here. All these are combinations of a couple different colors just to start, give that muted look to it. And this one I really have to shake. So that's the gold. Mm -hmm. Holy cow, look at that gold. Oh, that's pretty. Kenny, zoom in on this one. I will. He's like, I got this. <laughs> wow. To see that, I would have never in a million years thought to over and with that little splatter there don't worry that, about it yeah because it looks yeah mm -hmm. so yeah so this is where i what is that this is rain oh that's beautiful mm -hmm. oh god okay wow okay wow i think i'm gonna stop right now and just start manipulating this a little bit so i've got my okay fancy tool yeah we can't wait too long though travel dryer so what I'm doing now is I'm going to use my blow dryer to ma manipulate the inks back and forth and the dryer will push the color and then I can push it out and start adding alcohol to give an effect. I can blend it out. I can bring it in, uh, combine all the colors together, get them really saturated. I can manipulate where the gold goes, a little bit of alcohol if you need it, if it's drying out. See, I love that, how you did that. Now 
Now you can add more ink if you want to. You can add more alcohol. You just keep on playing with it until mm -hmm. you are happy. I'm happy. I'm happy right now. <laughs> As I keep messing with it. <laughs> Oh my gosh, so pretty. Now see, my issue with doing this is I don't have the visions to to see through what it's gonna be when it evaporates. Cause I haven't worked with the, the alcohols enough to mm -hmm. trust the process. Does that make sense? A lot like resin, you get to know your products. Yeah. You get to know what they do. Um, you get to pick out your colors. But resin will always surprise you. Yeah. Right? Well, yeah. Same with the alcohol ink. Exactly. So I can pick my colors. I kind of know what I want to do. I'm going to go in a diagonal for, uh, fashion, but I could do this 3,000 times. Every one of them is going to look different. Exactly, exactly. So, oh, look at that. I love this lady. <laughs> oh, love it. Well, I'm glad you like it. So pretty. Look, oh, I'm so excited. Absolutely gorgeous. Now, this is mostly dry, it's not completely dry. Um, if this were alcohol inks, and I would do the same thing with dyes, I would make sure that it dries for maybe a good hour, hour and a half, depends on how thick of it, mm -hmm. like you got a lot of buildup on mm -hmm. this line there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let it dry really, really good. And then um, use the a UV spray okay. on it yeah. to kind of help seal, one, it kinda it. seal it down. It helps out the inks a little bit more. But also because I'm using resin art, which is a very, very light, fine particle, mm -hmm. it kind of helps trap it a little bit. Okay. But always if you use the resin art and alcohol ink, must do epoxy on top. Right, okay, and that and, also, yeah, if that we- traps it. Exactly, and mm -hmm. if we didn't do it, as soon as that epoxy hits that, mm -hmm. it's going to kind of almost reactivate it, right? Uh, the alcohol inks, I mean, it could start to be like bleed into the, if we don't put a sealer, and then we poured some, the alcohol some, into, I, I mean the yeah, epoxy. Yeah, some, some might. Okay. But uh, we always go as far as rule of thumb with alcohol inks, a matte finish okay. or the satin, but I always gravitate towards the matte. The other one, the, uh, the gloss, has a alcohol base in it and, that and it will closet. reactivate stuff. Okay. okay. So I'm sure it'll reactivate that resin art big time. Yeah, cool. On that All part. Right, so. But if you notice this one, we haven't really done anything with it. We just threw it on color know. on I there. Know. Well, we got to get it to look like that, but that's gorgeous too. Uh, yeah, that's what I was going <laughs> to say. Even if you like it, I'm like, okay, just like that, you could let it air dry out. You could bring up the dryer way up high and just very lightly dry it out. Mm -hmm. And if you notice, some of the colors are a mixture of a bunch of different colors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we didn't put that color. surprises that have come out. It's like, yeah. where did that purple come from? Right. So, guys, let me know in the comments below. What would you do? Would you leave it really soft and let it kind of evaporate on its own? Or would you do this? I'm gonna tell you, I love this. So this could be a finish on its own. This could be a finish on its own. But we're gonna go to the next step. Thank you, All right, fine. let's go. And if you don't want it to move as much, just come up. Well, I want it to have that darker center. Mm -hmm. like over there does. So guys, let me know in the comments also if you would like me to host a class and have Miss Clara come and teach a class here at RK3 Designs. Let me know if you would be interested and you'd be able to come see us. We'd probably do like a one-day class, maybe a two-day class. Would that be fun? Well, heck yeah, it'd be fun. We know how to have fun here at RK3 Designs. All right, so I'm getting nervous, so I'm gonna let you finish the great. rest of it. All right, so. You are doing great. I'm not gonna do a whole lot to this. Oh, wowee. That's so pretty. This right in here mm -hmm. is subtle but gorgeous. Uh, that's what I like. Mm -hmm. So what I'm thinking in my brain yes. is that's the front of the edge. So maybe if we bring something just so that we add color to the edge. Mm -hmm. Maybe we could do something very soft and light and maybe a little bold in that corner, but get just some subtle colors to run over the edge. Okay. What, being bossy? Well, you got your own business, <laughs> come on. Right? And I love how you get all of these colors and none of these colors were in those bottles. It's because it's just the blending. Mm-hmm. 
I'm gonna do this really light area first. Yes. You want lighter than that? No, I think that's beautiful right there. That's pretty. Yeah. Yeah. I can't see the front, Kenny, but you can. So he's shaking his head. <laughs> Deb's shaking her head. All right, good. Yes. And then maybe add over here. Then we can make one more little maybe bold statement. And then we'll come here and just do a few little softness. And then I think we're done. I this love that. I love that color. This is mermaid. Yes. Mermaid. We know a mermaid, don't we? Yeah. We do. Her name is Erica. Yep. She's been hinting around for some mermaid habitat, too. I know. We're going to have to build her one. <laughs> so those of you that don't know, we have a friend, Erica Bear, from Artist Till Death. Mm -hmm. She's a bona fide mermaid. Yep. Yep. It's right before it starts to dry and starts making those hard lines is my very favorite part. And if you want to soften an edge, what we do is add a little bit of alcohol to it. You push it into the color. I'm pushing it into the color, pulling it back out, pushing it back in, pulling it back out. Mm -hmm. And that helps get a little bit out mm -hmm. and then bring it back in. Just very light. Mm -hmm. And it just leaves just enough color right there. Oh yeah, that's exactly, exactly what I want. Exactly. Beautiful. See, I knew that. No, yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you can read my brain. That is a scary thought. Holy cow. Okay, so what I do want, I do want some sort of color, very minute in the background. I really don't want actual white mm -hmm. too much to be showing through. So let's do whatever color you think, even maybe a, I don't know, something just very almost transparent that you could barely tell there's a color let's do that on on most of the rest of the finish okay let me use my little one here so i can put it precisely where i want it okay oh yeah the rain's pretty yeah Yes, yeah, I like that. Maybe soften that a little bit, but that color is going to mm -hmm. bring in, is gonna tie in the rest of her bathroom because mm -hmm. she's got walls that are more of a warmer tone. And this little bit of white right there is really, is fine, that's pretty. Okay. Yeah, I like that. Um, all right, so maybe we could do a little bit, see how I have, I have where I touched it underneath? Mm -hmm. So I wanna cover that with something. i do a little bit of a hint of color Maybe there. a little hint of color there. Okay. Don't run all the way off. Do we need to tilt it a little bit? No. Okay. Just. Yeah. When you have a situation where you hit, get a little bit of a line there, mm -hmm. you can do your finger mm -hmm. in the alcohol just so that it doesn't adhere to the board too much. Oh, okay. And that helps. You're gonna go home and do alcohol inks now? Oh yeah? Oh fun. Yeah, beautiful. Yes. All right, I wanna talk a little bit about cleanup, getting particulars about your design and stuff. Uh, if you, as you notice, there's some drips here and some drips in some other areas. What you can do is apply, obviously, more color to the area. Keep on manipulating it back and forth. Some colors, I'm sure, like any dyes and other paints and all that, can have a tendency to stain. So mm -hmm. you can either make an intentional design, continuing to add your drips, your mm -hmm. dots and stuff. You can add more color to it, or you can put a little bit more elbow grease yep. on with a little bit of alcohol and a paper towel and just wipe down the area really good. Right. Um, the other cool thing is like, 
we have drips down in here, but it's really close to a design. We can simply apply more alcohol there and get it to soften out where it kind of gets softer here and brings I would that love color that. in and out a bit. I would like so. that because it'll go over. Then we have a little bit of color that's going to go over mm -hmm. the edge as well. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, so it, it finesses your design a little so bit. So you're basically saying you never mess up, and if you do, you can fix it, right? <laughs> Say yes, yes Claire. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but all right. we all have done right. major blenders. All right, well, so. this is, this is I'm, I'm loving every second of this so far. So. Well, cool. Okay, so we want to add some more color over into here because I know this area is really stark white, um, and we, you want to do some more of this. Yeah. Just maybe add a little bit more color in there, yes. blues or yep, something yep, like yep. that. Yeah, maybe be soft in between and have just a hint of something that's a little bold. Kind of okay. like in that corner right there, you're okay. bold and then you went Over soft. There. Yeah. Okay. Good. I love telling like what I want and you making it like happen. happen? I love I'm just that. just loving the fact that I can make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got a little bit more of the smoky in here. Okay, a lot more of the smoky. <laughs> You want mermaid? I love the mermaid and I love the uh, rain. The rain? They're beautiful. Okay. Like maybe the rain and is, is that the real soft one? Mm hmm Yeah, I like the rain in between maybe. Yeah. Okay. So we'll get that. Stick our elbow in it. Yes, I just did that. <laughs> and what I can do is bring the alcohol over where some of the areas where the dots are, mm -hmm. react, hopefully reactivate it bring it back into the design. All right, so we add a little bit more alcohol to here to try to get the flow to work out a little bit better. Oh, I actually like this. I like having this. Oh, Clara. Yes, yes, yes. Very pretty. Personal, you know, I don't even know yet. Is this something, because these are a very muted, very soft colors. So I'm thinking a matte would look beautiful, but also a gloss. So we haven't come to that determination yet. I'll call, I'll talk well, to the customer. We know what a matte looks like and you want to show both? Yeah. That'll give you an example. All right, so here, let's see this. So this is a piece that she did. This is a high gloss, okay? This is a matte finish. So what do you like? And these are actually the colors that are in here, okay? Mm -hmm. So let us know in the comments below, gloss or matte UTC. All right, perfect. Okay, so basically we're through because we I don't want to manipulate anymore. We're going to let all of this wetness evaporate on its own. Yeah, all right, completely good. evaporate. I might work at it with a heat gun. You a know, little just, bit, right, just to get just it to evaporate. Bit more. And then I'm gonna touch up some areas that maybe flew, uh, flowed, 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 <laughs> flowed, went over the edge, uh, all right, just to make it look nice and pretty. Okay, well then I'm gonna and step back. And that's just back. a matter of being. You're, yeah. Now you're perfecting it, right? Now you're getting, you're, you're getting, you're going and looking at mm -hmm. your whole, at your piece as a whole. Yeah. And you're like, okay, this is. I want to fix little pieces. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. I'm gonna step back and let you do your thing. Okay. Oh, like that. Look at that's so dumb. So that's What's gonna be the doing? thumbnail. All right, so guys, I can't even tell you how gorgeous this is. Holy cow! So we have let the colors dry actually 24 hours, and then we uh, sprayed the surface. We put about three coats of the archival spray. I will link this in the description below, and it is very important to know if you, when you buy the archival spray or clear spray paint will also do the trick, but you have to use it in matte. You cannot use the gloss. The gloss has alcohol and it will actually reactivate your finish. So make sure it's matte. So we've let that dry overnight and now we're going to do a flood coat and do a couple of little kind of designs on top. We'll let that dry and then we will come over it in 24 hours with the UTC. All right, so a couple of things before we pour the flood coat also, I forgot to mention. The archival spray or the um, clear spray paint, whichever you guys decide to use, is going to make it matte. 
it's going to look matte, which is great. I absolutely love the matte. But when you pour the gloss flood coat over the top, it's going to bring back that gloss. So don't worry about it looking matte because it will come back to a gloss. Now, then you need to decide what you want to do with the UTC, whether you want it to be a high gloss or a matte finish. Uh, I think both, either one would look stunning on this piece. Also, usually you will sand your color coat before you pour a flood coat. You cannot do that with your archival spray or your clear spray paint because you'll just sand it off. So the spray paint actually itself and the archival spray actually creates a really good tooth. So I don't worry about going straight over that with the flood coat. Never had issue. Uh, okay, also what I'm gonna do with the flood coat is I'm gonna add a very, very tiny amount of gold dust. You don't have to do that. You can add any other kind of dust, but you don't wanna add a mica powder because it will actually tint the flood coat. The gold dust doesn't tint. It just gives a little bit of a sparkle. And I mean, when I say tiny bit, tiny, tiny bit, because I don't want that. I don't want anything in that flood coat to take away from this gorgeous finish that I have already. All right. When I mix up that gold dust, I can really barely see it. Actually, I'm going to put a little bit more just because I kind of like that a little sparkle. This a little bit. So I'm going to do it again. And I'm, y'all, literally, that's all I'm doing. All right. Now I'm going to make it an executive decision once I get the flood coat. Once I get this stupid jar shit, I'm going to make an executive decision. <laughs> um, whether or not I'm going to come over the top with some gold veins where I use the Artist Till Death product called uh, 007. If you've never used this, what are you doing with your life? This particular mica will float on the top. It's not going to sink down. That's why I want to use it is so that it really kind of gives the, the flood coat kind of life. I don't use this a lot because it's a little bit goes a long way. All right, so we'll make that decision here in just a minute. All right, so here we go. We're doing our flood coat at three ounces per square foot. We are using the art coat, um, which there is no difference between the art coat and the regular stone coat countertop epoxy, except that the art coat uh, has more UV protection, tad bit longer open time, but same high heat resistance and the same scratch resistance. So I use the art coat anytime that I am going to be doing a light colored finish. Holy cow. This is absolutely just this part. I just hit a little bit and I saw those colors pop and it's just amazing. Now, you guys know I always use my hand if you do on this finish decide to use a trial, make sure you are very, very soft with that trial. You don't want to put too much pressure because you'll um, you'll scratch. Now, I'm gonna have a fun time getting that front corner because I'm fun size, I've been told. Kind of short. So just make sure your edges are done really well. Take your finger, run your finger underneath that edge so that that epoxy really rolls over and you get a really pretty, pretty edge. Also, you wanna make sure that on all of your pours that your surface is level. You may have to, if you're doing a pour in place, many times you'll have to shim your countertops if they're not level. Um, I've even had to go in and actually pour uh, using a quick drying concrete to go in there and level those countertops out. If it's not too bad out of level, you can use Fondo. Okay, so you also, this is going to be an undermount sink. So you also want to make sure that you do the same thing 
with the inner edges, you run those fingers under so that that epoxy rolls under and you get a really pretty finish. This is going between two walls, okay? So I don't have finished edges on my sides or my back. So I'm not really too concerned with that epoxy running over the backside. I do like to go ahead and run my hand so I don't get a big buildup on that edge. All right, so once I have um, spread it out with my hand, you're gonna wanna torch and don't torch too much, all right? Just torch enough to get the bubbles out um, because if you torch a lot, you're just gonna have your product get very fluid and it's gonna run off. All right, so I often get this question, what do I do about dust bunnies? I don't really worry about dust bunnies when I'm doing my flood coat anymore because now everything that leaves our studio will have the ultimate top coat on it. So if I do get little dust bunnies at this stage, I will just sand because I'm gonna sand it before I do the UTC. And any of those little surface dust bunnies are gonna come out. Now, if you're not gonna use the UTC, that's when it's very important when you do a flood coat to make sure that you have turned off any airflow, uh, you've cleaned your space prior and let all that dust settle. And um, you can also build little tents with the plastic uh, or make a dust-free zone, however you want to do that, because you will want to uh, kind of be careful with all the little dust bunnies. When I do a flood coat, I usually do it at night. I'll flood Turn off everything. Even though I'm gonna be doing the UTC, I still don't want airflow because I don't want ripples. And then I will turn off the lights. So uh, bugs often are attracted by the reflection of the light. So you'll see little bugs in the morning. All right, so looks absolutely gorgeous. Love this. I think I'm going to go ahead and go forward with the uh, veins on top. Now very soft veins guys i'm not i don't want this to, to take away from anything so i'm very very lightly you can see that it's just it's just fluid i want this to kind of move a little bit because i want it to soften out i'm just going to take these veins and i'm just going to very lightly come over the top knowing that these veins are going to be moving as the utc uh, i'm sorry as the flood coat starts to settle and kind of just kind of follow i think that's it just want a tiny bit i want it to flow over that edge in the front i'm done now i know these veins are going to soften because it's moving and that's what i'm going for i want it to be very soft just that little bit gives this whole piece now depth because it looks almost 3d you don't have to do that I just think it's gorgeous. All right, guys, so I'm so excited that our countertop made it to its forever home. Uh, obviously, this is a new build, so we still have stuff to do in this bathroom, but it came out absolutely amazing. So let me know what you think. Leave me some comments below. Let me know maybe what colors you would do. And uh, give us a thumb up if you like this video. Subscribe to our channel and hit the bell for future notifications. Also, let me know if you would like to see more projects like this. All right, guys, until next week, remember, don't be scared, move forward, and be creative.